Now here we have an example to determine the boiling point of water. So basically this setup is done where there's a thermometer set up on a retort stand. There's a beaker over here with a bunch of crushed ice at let's say minus 5 degrees. Then after that you put a Bunsen burner with a slow flame. So this slow flame would continually heat up this beaker of crushed ice and it will continually input thermal energy things in this beaker. So the crushed ice will slowly raise its, raise its temperature until 0 degrees, let's say from minus 5 to 0 degrees. And after that it will melt into water at 0 degrees. And then 0 degrees will heat up all the way into water at 100 degrees. At 100 degrees, the water at 100 degrees would then change its state into steam at 100 degrees. Only after all the water has become steam at 100 degrees, then the steam can continue to increase its temperature higher the temperature every minute. If you do so, you will get a graph something like this. This is called the heating curve. We are going to use water as an example. Over here is the solid. Basically, we start off here at ice at maybe minus 5 or minus 10 degrees Celsius. When it is being heated, the thermal energy will be gained from the surrounding and the particles will vibrate faster and faster and faster. So along this part of the curve, you can see there's a diagonal line. And if it's a diagonal line, it means it's increasing in temperature with every minute. And you can see that even though the fire is continuous, however, this line becomes a straight horizontal line. So what is happening here? Remember what I said about if the thermal energy goes towards changing its state, it cannot change its temperature? Well, then this is exactly what is happening here. Because it has reached what we call the melting point. At the melting point, the object starts to change its state from solid into liquid. So when it's changing state, it cannot change its temperature. And therefore we have something called a melting point. For example, the melting point of water is zero degrees. So anywhere along this line would be between solids and liquids, a mixture between water and ice. Over here, there will all still be ice at exactly zero degrees. And then in the middle, it may be part solid ice and part liquid water. And at this point over here, where it ends, it will be 100% water at 0 degrees Celsius. Then the melting point will be 0 degrees. Melting is taking place. The thermal energy is absorbed to overcome forces of attraction between particles. This thermal energy which is absorbed without a change in temperature is called the latent heat of fusion. Once all the matter has changed to liquid, then the curve starts going up again. This means that it has stopped changing in state and therefore it can continue to increase in temperature once again. So from here, the liquid will change from 0 degrees and keep increasing temperature until it was 100 degrees. The thermal energy will be gained from the surrounding and the particles will move faster. Therefore, at this part, it will be increasing in internal kinetic energy. And over here, once it reaches this point, the boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius, it will stop increasing temperature and at this point it will change in state. When it's changing in state, it cannot increase the temperature. So it will become a gas and start boiling and bubbling and all of this will occur at one temperature, 100 degrees Celsius. Boiling is taking place. So over here, it will be completely liquid at 100 degrees Celsius. In the middle, it will be a mixture of liquid and gas, both at 100 degrees Celsius. And at this point over here, it will be only gas at 100 degrees Celsius. Thermal energy is absorbed to overcome the forces of attraction between the particles once again. This thermal energy which is absorbed without a change in temperature is called the latent heat of vaporization. Finally, at this point over here, once it is completely gas, then it can start increasing in temperature once again. However, at this part over here, it is quite difficult to measure the temperature of gas. This is possible only when there's a further heating and when there's a closed space. 